In 1997, the Defense Special Weapons Agency conducted the first of a unique series of comprehensive test ban treaty monitoring experiments in the Republic of Kazakhstan. Carried out at a former Soviet nuclear test site, the experiments tested the effect of variations in the depth of chemical explosions on the character of seismic waves they generate. The Defense Special Weapons Agency managed these experiments in conjunction with the Department of Defense's Cooperative Threat Reduction Program. The experiments were conducted in collaboration with the Department of Energy, its national laboratories, and the National Nuclear Center of Kazakhstan. The test area, known as Balapan, is located at the Semipalatinsk test site in eastern Kazakhstan. The Soviets' first peaceful nuclear explosion, codenamed Shagan, took place near the center of the site on January 15, 1965. This test was a nuclear cratering experiment that resulted in the creation of a small lake along the Shagan River. The Soviets conducted 108 nuclear tests at Balapan in vertical boreholes that were drilled nearly one meter in diameter and up to one kilometer deep. They drilled an additional 13 nuclear test emplacement boreholes that were never used for nuclear tests. These boreholes are being closed and sealed under the Cooperative Threat Reduction Program. Four of the unused boreholes were selected for the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty experiments. Nuclear tests generate seismic waves in the Earth that can be recorded at great distances. Because these waves are unlike those generated by earthquakes, analytical techniques can be used to discriminate between the two types of seismic sources. At Balapan, scientists hope to obtain calibration data on the seismic signals from underground detonations of chemical explosives, from signals measured near the blast and at regional distances up to about 1,500 kilometers. The chemical explosions were conducted to evaluate researchers' hypotheses that with increased depth, the same size explosion would produce a smaller seismic impulse because the greater pressure at depth would resist the expansion of the explosion cavity, thereby decreasing its size. Experts from the Kazakhstani blasting industry and engineers from Kazakhstan's National Nuclear Center designed the chemical explosive charges for these experiments. Plans were made to detonate three 25-ton charges in unused boreholes at depths of 50, 300, and 550 meters. The geology at Balapan consists of a thin layer of unconsolidated clays, silts, and sands underlain by hard, dense, fractured rocks, either granites or metamorphic rocks. Just a few meters below the surface, the rocks are saturated with water, so an explosion only a few tens of meters deep will be strongly coupled into seismic waves. Workers deployed accelerometers within a few hundred meters of the three boreholes and calibrated them with 40 to 100 kilogram chemical explosive charges detonated at the same depths as large explosions would occur. These small explosions allowed scientists to calibrate the seismic characteristics of the rock at each borehole. Scientists used a fourth borehole to test the chemical explosive's performance. The explosive material was a waterproof granulated form of TNT known as granulatol. The explosives were tested under 650 meters of water by detonating a five-ton charge in borehole 1389. This successful test, which partially ejected the casing at the top of the borehole, confirmed that the Kazakhstani's choices of explosive and test design were feasible. The first 25-ton blast would serve as a crucial test of the experiment's technical plan. The borehole, number 1311, was located on the western side of the test field. In 1990, the Soviets had selected this hole for a nuclear test that was to be the first monitored by the United States under the threshold test ban treaty protocols. They had drilled the hole to about 650 meters, sufficient to contain a 150 kiloton nuclear explosion. The Soviets had also drilled and cased a second satellite hole to obtain on-site yield measurements to verify that the nuclear explosion had not exceeded the 150 kiloton treaty threshold. Stanchions had been laid to hold the cables that would trigger the nuclear explosion and carry the data by which the nuclear test yield would be measured. However, the test never took place, 
as the Soviet government declared a moratorium on nuclear testing in December of 1990. Borehole 1311 was then selected by American and Kazakhstani researchers for the first of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty monitoring experiments in which a chemical explosion of 25 tons would be detonated near the Earth's surface. The explosive material was delivered to the site and loaded into the hull in the 48 hours prior to the test. The 25-ton chemical charges used in borehole 1311 and the other boreholes were cylindrical slightly less than one meter in diameter and about 34 meters high. Seen here, workers pour the explosive into a confined section of the borehole. A detonator is then constructed of multiple loops of detonating cord and inserted into a steel cage that will be filled with explosives. This cage is lowered into the center of the 25-ton charge volume and covered with the remaining explosives. The cable is then wired to a remote site from which the blast will be triggered. Scientists detonated the first 25-ton explosive charge at 3.07 p.m. local time on August 3, 1997. A several-ton section of steel and concrete casing, which had belonged to the upper portion of the test and placement hull, can be seen flying through the air. The blast excavated a crater approximately 50 meters in diameter and 7 meters deep. Seen in the crater is the tilted casing of the satellite hull, which had been 10 meters from the center of the test emplacement hull. The surrounding soil, a water-saturated clay, was an ideal medium for coupling the energy of the blast into seismic waves. Seismic stations recorded the explosions above the blast and at multiple distances and directions from the epicenter. Both existing permanent seismic stations and temporary field stations were used to record the blasts. These included the eight-station Kazakhstan Broadband Seismic Network and the Kurchatov Seismic Array. The Lamont Observatory of Columbia University coordinated the local and regional distance seismic recording effort, working with the Institute of Geophysical Research of Kazakhstan and supported by the U.S. Department of Energy's Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. The U.S. Department of Energy's Los Alamos National Laboratory coordinated the near source and strong motion recordings, working with the Kazakhstani seismologists from the Institute of Geophysical Research to carry out the measurements. From a seismologist's point of view, this first explosion exceeded expectations. Not only was it recorded clearly on the near field, local, and regional stations, it was also recorded on single stations at distances up to 760 kilometers and on several seismic arrays as distant as Alaska at 6,700 kilometers. The blast was large enough to be located by the Prototype Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty International Data Center, which reported the event at magnitude 4.0 MB. The second 25-ton explosive charge at a mean depth of 283 meters was detonated at 2.08 p.m. local time, August 31, 1997. A spectacular event, the blast is seen ejecting a jet of water from the borehole and a 10-meter long portion of the borehole casing is thrown out. The third 25-ton detonation occurred at a mean depth of 533 meters at 2.30 p.m. local time, September 28, 1997. In this final and deepest large blast, the explosion is followed by a series of gushes of water and ejection of the borehole casing. The tops of the nearby towers are 25 meters high. Regional seismic records of these three explosions clearly show that compressional wave amplitudes decrease with increased explosion depth. The shear wave amplitudes for deeper explosions are significantly lower than the shallow explosion at 50 meters. In terms of seismic magnitude, the explosion at 300 meters depth has a magnitude 0.3 units smaller than the explosion at 50 meters deep and the 550 meter shot has an average magnitude of 0.5 units less. The characteristics of the regional seismic signals, especially the compressional to shear wave ratio, suggest that the depth of explosions can be determined from seismic signals at regional distances. If that is the case, many near surface mining blasts might therefore be distinguished from a deeper underground nuclear test an important finding with respect to comprehensive test ban treaty verification.
These experiments were the first in a series that the Defense Special Weapons Agency and the Department of Energy plan to conduct with the National Nuclear Center of Kazakhstan. A follow-on verification exercise is planned for the summer of 1998 at nearby Degelin Mountain, at one time the most active of the Soviet underground nuclear test sites. In the experiment, scientists will use a tamped chemical explosion of 100 tons as the source for calibrating the seismic and infrasound networks of the International Monitoring System. This experiment will also test the on-site inspection and confidence building measures provisions of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. Researchers have selected and are preparing an unused tunnel at Degelin Mountain for the test. A second 100-ton explosion is being planned for 1999. The chemical explosive will be detonated inside Degelin Mountain using a different configuration. Data from this event will be compared with data from the 1998 test to determine seismic signal reduction and spectral effects. These experiments result from a unique collaboration that represents a creative extension of existing dismantlement activities through cost-effective experiments, furthering the U.S. goal of improving the technical monitoring and verifiability of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. The National Nuclear Center of Kazakhstan is extremely supportive in developing and executing the technical program. When these experiments end in 1999, they will leave an important political and scientific legacy in their contribution to the monitoring of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty.